Hey there, Chad here. Thanks for joining me. This is Ostronauts, and this is build 0.14 or 14 of Ostronauts. It just released in September of 24. It had been in beta for roughly a month, and so I'd been kicking it around a little bit. One of the huge differences in this build of Ostronauts is it's introduced reactors that are made up of multiple pieces. In the past, reactors were one piece, and then you had fuel tanks for the for the reactor around it, but in general, it was just kind of one thing. And now there are tons of pieces. It's very modular. You can add duplicates of some of the pieces to make it more effective. You get to kind of play with it to tune it to how you want it to work. But this introduces a big learning curve of how do you build a reactor now? Because it's not as easy as it used to be. It used to be you dropped it there and that was it. So we have multiple pieces we have to use now. And we're gonna learn how to do that here right now. I would be grateful if you would consider subscribing to my channel for both Ostronauts coverage and other games that I enjoy playing and teaching. And if you would like to leave a comment or like the video, that would be really helpful too. I really do appreciate that. So the first thing you have to do when you build reactors, you have to cut a hole in the floor. And I've turned off the air pump to make sure I'm not wasting any resources. The door is closed, we're otherwise sealed. And this room is way too big for a reactor, but I wanted to give myself plenty of space and I'll ultimately end up using some of it for storage or something like that in the future. But for now, I wanted to have plenty of space, a big canvas to work on. The very first thing we have to do is cut a hole in the floor where we want the reactor to sit. So I'm going to uninstall this floor and we can speed things up here. Okay, and there that is. Put that in his pocket and he's good to go. So now we have our, our spot here. This is where the center of the reactor is effectively going to sit. The first thing we do is we put down a field coil. Now, if you've disassembled one of these new reactors, you'll notice that when it's in good condition, when it comes apart, it breaks into six pieces. It's got two of these, they're identical. And then it's got four of these, which are basically quadrants of the actual reactor core. All of that goes on one spot. So when you're looking at it, once it's built, it just looks like one thing. But when you disassemble it, it will break into six pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and install one of these. We're gonna put it just so its center is right over that hole. And that's basically gonna be the center of the reactor core. And you'll notice he actually went and grabbed that on his own to put the second one on top of it. And he's going to install that for a moment. As discussed before in build 14, assembling things, repairing things tends to take longer than it did before. I don't really mind that. And the longer I've played, it does feel a little more realistic. I, I have to say in build 13, you know, you could completely repair and overhaul your ship not this ship necessarily, but the starter, you know, which is about, you know, a quarter of this now. Uh, you could do the entire thing in 45 minutes of game time. So about five minutes of real time. I, I don't know that that ever felt really reasonable to me. That felt a little too fast. So what we're gonna do here is you'll notice the feet on the shield. So I grabbed one of the shield pieces or the core is what it's calling it, I guess here. The goal is we're gonna center that over what's already been put into place. And then the monitor is going to be where the feet are. So that's where we actually will have our control panel. And it's built into the piece. We don't have to do anything special for that, but that's where we'll probably want primary access to it. So I'm gonna put it here. Incidentally, the light is here just to help us see this a little better. These lights, uh, the, the, the room is big enough that the wall lights don't quite illuminate this very well. So just wanted to be clear on that. Um, and there it is right there. And he will grab all four of those pieces on his own and assemble it. Love it when he does stuff on his own. Now, while he is working on that, I'm gonna slow it down a little. You'll notice these little like nodes here. This is how all the other pieces connect. We will, as we assemble it and we install these pieces, they will need to connect to some of these. And we'll see how that fits here in a second. The pieces are, this is a, uh, they call it the laser capacitor. There's a generator, MHD generator. I don't know what the abbreviations necessarily mean. Oh, well, there it is. Magnetohydrodynamic generator, okay. Hydrodynamics probably has something to do with water, right? Uh, 
the larger pieces are going to take up a little more space, as you would think. This one's kind of a longish piece, and so we'll see. That's kind of why this isn't perfectly in the center of this room. I need a little more space this way, and I'm going to use a little more space that way. Okay, he's done there. Let's go ahead and just talk about the rest of these, though. There's a laser array. I have a second one over in another room that we can install if we wish. Uh, this is a pellet feeder. Uh, we already talked about that. The fuel regulator. There's a cryo pump and a core pump that gets this started. If any of the pieces are missing that are required, it won't start. Oh, and I'm sorry, we also have the fuel tanks, right? We have three different fuels that it will need and we will install those here as well. So as I was saying though, if one of these pieces that's needed is either damaged or not attached, the whole thing won't, won't start up at all. So that's something to be aware of. I've gone ahead and repaired these and restored them to their maximum quality and now we're going to install. Uh, so one option is to maybe put that there. I'm actually, I'm thinking I might go here with this one. And he's going to put that in there. And then what we can actually do is use these other nodes for pieces that are smaller. I'm not certain that there is a benefit to how you put the pieces. I think the reactors, uh, the specs of the reactor will change as you add different pieces to it but there is still the minimum of what you must have to make it work, and that's what we're working with here. So we've added the fuel regulator. Next, I'm gonna put on the core pump, and I'm gonna put it right next to it. Again, I don't believe there's any prescribed place these must be, other than connected. So there we have it. You might notice also the corners are a little different. This isn't symmetrical. There's, there's the monitor. That's where the control panel is for the whole thing. Okay, next let's add one of the bigger pieces. Let's add the generator. And the generator probably goes well like here since it kind of leans off to that side. The only thing is, is I want to be able to put a tank down there if I can. So maybe we will, maybe we'll do the generator here. Let's give that a try. The tanks take up a huge amount of space when you're placing them. I don't think you can put them in a corner like this. I think I can offset it by one and it'll be okay, but they have to be seven spaces apart. Uh, well, I, I guess what I should say is their footprint tends to be uh, seven by seven. So that ends up making the centers of them have to be seven apart. And that can be a little dicey in a, in a room like this. The good news is I could put them anywhere on the ship. In fact, I could even put them outside the ship if I wanted to. That shouldn't be a problem. They don't have to be connected with conduits or any kind of direct line of sight or anything like that. So that's good. Uh, the laser capacitor, let's do that next. And I'm sure we could find lore or something somewhere that tells us what these pieces are really representing. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put that one here. There's a small method to my, oh, it won't go there. Um, yeah, it has to be on one of these, I'm sorry. So we'll put it there. I'm hoping I can get this tank here. At the very worst, I can install it in one of my cargo bays and we'll just go with that if, if that's what it comes down to. Oh, his tool died. Yeah, I knew that might happen. Um, I, think his, I think his drill ran out of battery. Yep, okay, be right back. Let me replace that battery. Here he's back and he has a new battery, so we're going to go ahead and auto task to get him to start working on that, and then we'll turn that off. Let's get him to stay here at that point. And I'm going to put this pellet feeder, which I assume like feeds uh, fuel pellets into the engine. We're going to try putting it right here. Yep, that works. Good. One of the ships that I loot it, I guess, had the reactor up against a wall. So it was only using three of the sides and that did seem to work pretty well. Um, I didn't think to copy that down to kind of reproduce it here, but just something to consider. There are lots of different ways you could set this up if you choose. Let's go ahead and put this one. We'll put him, um, you know what? I know what that one's gonna look like. Let's see what this one looks like shape-wise. Yeah, so let's put this over here. That looks good.
And this is the cryo pump. This is what keeps it cool. One thing I do need to do, which I haven't yet, is I need to put a cooler in this room. This room will heat up as the reactor runs. And so that's something to be mindful of. I'm going to see if I can get this tank here. Doesn't, well, maybe I pick it up first. Yeah, there we go. All right, that worked better than I thought it was going to. So I'm happy for that. So one tank in, let's put the laser array in. That's the last piece of the actual reactor that has to go in. Um, I wonder if we can put it here. We can, awesome. I kind of wanted to leave that open up here if possible so I have plenty of walking space. Also, this tank is probably gonna need to go over here. Probably need to move the heater over. Um, I'll probably do that in the future, but for today, we just wanna see the reactor actually get up to speed. Okay, there we go. And then it's just a matter of installing these. So let's see if, where we can get this guy. I don't think I can, I don't think it'll actually let me put it there. Uh, do I wanna put it there? Oh, we could. Okay, it will. I'm a little surprised by that. I didn't think it would do it. I thought it would be too close. I guess that is, they're, they're more than seven apart center to center, so maybe that's okay. And it would be great if I could install this one down here too, but I, that, yeah, you can see that's all red. So he'll need to go maybe here. That'll work. Now, if I wanna add extra pieces like extra pellet feeders or something, I have some space up here. I don't know if you need extra pumps or anything like that. There are configurations you can look at online to see what might work for you. Uh, this is now done though. We should be installed. So at this point, we are going to open the control panel. This is the control panel. And you know what? This will look a lot better without his helmet on. So give me just a second. I'll be right back. We're gonna fix this up. We're not completely connected yet. I forgot a step. He needs to come and get some conduit. I think I counted 15 pieces. We'll take 20 just to be safe. So he's not running back and forth. Okay. Pressure's still coming up. We should be in good shape. Temperature's fine. Yeah, he should be okay now. All right, so I'm gonna hit L and that shows us the spots that need conduit. We're just gonna go to install, power, conduit. And we're gonna connect these. Let's just do this. And then right there. And we will auto task it and speed him up. Ah, oh, he should have plenty. I think there is an input and an output. Uh, I don't have the specs for exactly how that works right now. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and continue with it here. Okay, and now you'll see uh, this would have started here. We wanna first flip it to battery and I'm gonna slow it down and that gets us started. We have a few things that are already looking okay here. Now the Core Purge is green, but I haven't actually turned it on yet. Um, hopefully that doesn't turn it back to red. The uh, laser capacitor looks like it's good to go. So now we just basically followed the checklist. Laser align, click there, green. Pellet feeder, click there, green. Cryo, click there, green. Fuel, regulator, good to go there. These are the field coils. We have to do both of them. Good to go. MHD, 
Looking good. And finally, ignition. Look at that. Our reactor is up and running. Now, we haven't engaged it for thrust yet, but this is basically, this is the torch drive. Um, that's going to be another video, though. We will talk about it in the future. Okay, again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I do plan on having one that shows how the torch drive works. I need to learn that. I haven't used this at all. I really don't even know what this is telling me yet. So that's going to be my work for the next couple of days. But I hope you enjoyed this and that it was helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment. I would love it if you would subscribe. That helps me out so, so much. And beyond that, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. And until next time, fair travels.